How to sell yourself effectively. Are you somebody who recognizes how important it is to be able to sell yourself, but somehow just thought of promoting, the thought of being promotionary or self-promoting is just turning you off. Are you needing to promote yourself and to sell yourself effectively because you see an opportunity to rise up in your career, but you just don't know how to do it? Well, this is the video for you because today I'm going to share with you five principles in the art of self-promotion. Principle number one, correlation between self-knowledge and self-doubt. When it comes to promoting yourself, oftentimes we have a lot of doubt. We feel like we lack confidence because we just don't know what to say. Or we know what we would say, which is usually, well, here's the degrees I had, here's all the schools that I went to, here are my years of experience, here's all the other companies that I used to work with and things that I've achieved. And after all of those inventories of our achievements and our credentials, it seems like there's a lot of other people who are so similar to us, and so therefore it feels like it's hard to compete. And all, both of these scenarios, either way, it's what one of the things that makes selling yourself so difficult. But I'm here to share with you that there is a direct correlation between your confidence and self-doubt and knowing yourself. You see, when you don't know yourself, this is where if someone were to ask you, tell me about yourself, right? Who are you? Those questions when someone asks you, especially in a job interview, most of the time we immediately think about our job titles the companies we work for, all of our major achievements, or maybe even your degrees, our credentials. And when you speak on those things, now it makes you just like everybody else. And it's very difficult to compete when there are others with similar degrees or same years of experience, or maybe even worked for companies that had, had a bigger footprint or fingerprint in the industry. So this is not about your, who you are is not your job title. Who you are is not your career history. So that's why it's important when you know yourself and you genuinely know yourself, then no matter what you see in terms of your strengths and your weaknesses, no matter how deeply you are aware of your securities and your insecurities, you are wholly at peace with who you are and you can communicate exactly who you are with authenticity and confidence comes as a result. So if you want to dive a little bit deeper into this, how do I know myself? How do I communicate and answer that question who am I and tell me, tell someone a little bit about me. How do I do that? If you want to dive deeper into it, then check out this video. It's right here. There's a link to it, a video that I released on my channel recently, all around how to get to know yourself and to define yourself instead of letting others define you. Check out that video. And then let's go to principle number two, cognitive dissonance counteracts desired outcome. So what do I mean by cognitive dissonance? And what is this force that's holding me back from self-promotion, right? So here's the thing. Now, comment below if you have ever thought to yourself that I don't, I don't like to promote myself because I want to be a humble person. And promoting is the opposite of humility. How many of you have thought that? Comment below, I want to hear from you. Or maybe you've thought to yourself, well, I don't like to promote myself. I don't like to sell myself because it's so salesy. And I don't like... I don't, I don't want to be salesy, right? So comment below. I want to hear from you. So have either one of these thoughts or something similar to that cross your mind. And that's why it's so difficult to get into this phase of self-promotion or selling yourself because it just feels so salesy or it's just not the definition of humility. It's not humble enough. Well, if that is the case, that those thoughts represent your attitudes for about self-promotion. Those represents your attitudes. And if you have an attitude that promotion is salesy or promotion is pushy or promotion is manipulative or promotion, promotion is self-aggrandizing and is not humbling, if that is your attitude towards it, it creates a cognitive dissonance in your mind because subconsciously, you will not work hard to achieve something that you despise. And you will definitely not work hard towards becoming something, something you despise. So if humility is valuable to you and you feel that if the moment you promote yourself that you are no longer humble, then it creates a, self -cog a cognitive dissonance and you're not going to work hard at becoming someone who's not humble. So this is where it's important. These thoughts, these these beliefs, your philosophies could be the thing that is counteracting your desired outcome. 
So this is where it's important to start to reconstruct your preconceived notions towards self, selling yourself and promotionary. Like what are different attitudes and beliefs that you need to carry from now, from this point forward so that you're not creating this cognitive dissonance? Because the number one ingredient to be able to be effective at selling yourself is to have complete congruency in the inside out, being congruent with the message that you are, that you are giving. So if you're incongruent with it, no matter what you say, there's going to be a cognitive, cognitive dissonance and your audience will be able to pick up on it. And so therefore the words that you say won't be as influential because you're not going to be believing in the words you say. If you're subconsciously believing that this is being very greedy or pushy or salesy. So there's going to be some sort of an energy that your audience will pick up that won't make your sell as effective. Principle number three, communication creates your subsequent experiences. So here's what this means. I'm going to translate and unpack this a little bit for you. Communication is the words that you say and words are the genesis of things that haven't, that don't exist yet. Right, let me say that again. Words are the genesis of some things that don't exist yet. So here's what I mean. Your words you are saying, the words who are going to plant the seeds into the garden of your future. When you communicate effectively, it creates whatever experience you're going to have subsequently. So this is all about effective communication. You want your words to be powerful. You want your words to be empowered from the inside out, but you also want to come from an inspiration, inspired speaking to be able to know what exactly am I going to say and why is this way of saying it going to be important. And so I'm going to give you a framework on how to be able to sell yourself in a way where communication creates your subsequent experiences. And this is in the moment, whoever your audience is, to know the audience, the context in which you are speaking, and also the message that you are going to say. So that's the trifecta I talk about, the golden triangle, audience, message, and context. And with those three parameters, to communicate in a way that you are demonstrating consistently while you are promoting yourself, that in your promotion, you show how your particular experiences, your particular skill sets, your knowledge, your intentions, and your achievements are going to help that audience achieve what's important to them. Show them, articulate with them, and illustrate how your particular combination of skills and experiences are going to help them to align with what their mission is, what they are working towards, what they are seeing as their highest priority outcomes. And when you communicate that effectively, now it is completely congruent for you because you don't need to feel like you are being salesy or without humility because you're showing them in your communication how you're going to be helping them to achieve what's important to them. And that takes care of that incongruence as well. So if you're somebody who's serious about mastering this skill set because you see the importance of communication, then click the link below in the description and apply to book a call with myself or a member of my team. And this is where we're going to explore how I can help you to master your communication skills. How do you apply that trifecta I talked about earlier, the golden triangle to all of your communications, whether or not you're promoting yourself, selling yourself, or you want to just be able to have executive presence and confidence when you are speaking so that you can take your career to next levels. Now, this is only for you. This opportunity is only for you if you're serious about getting the coaching to help you with your goals. This is not for you if you just want a quick fix or if you just want to be on YouTube University and just get information. If you're not serious about coaching, then this is not for you. The opportunity is only for you if you see the value of coaching and mentorship as well. So if that's you, then book a call and I look forward to meeting you and chatting with you on the inside. Principle number four, contemplation catalyzes achievements. Contemplation means thinking, right? And thinking is a very important part of learning, right? And as somebody who's gone through three degrees in college, nine years, three degrees in college, one of the things that I have found to be true is that the public education system emphasizes that the purpose of learning is just to know something. Right? We accumulate a lot of knowledge in university, in colleges, and therefore we're tested on our knowledge. How much can we remember? How much we can we remember and then communicate on paper in our writing or demonstrating our calculations? And so ingrained in us is this programming that's quite subconscious that the whole purpose of learning is just to accumulate knowledge. But what if I shared, what have you noticed in your life that when you've accumulated a lot of knowledge, 
just because you have that knowledge inside your head. If you're unable to get that knowledge outside your, of your head and implement it or articulate it, then it doesn't equal to achievements. It doesn't lead to your most meaningful achievements. So here's the thing. We spend so many years in school, in high school, in college as well, and a combination of all of that. We spend all of that time, so much of it, learning about things. Right? We learn about science. We learn about English literature. We learn about communication. We learn about physics. And we learn about history and law and so on. But rather than learning about something, which is just the information and accumulating knowledge, what about, what if we can learn from them? You see, the whole purpose of learning is not just to know it. The real and genuine purpose of learning is mastery. This means turning your knowledge into wisdom so that you can implement your knowledge in ways that are second nature to you that do not need to use up your mental resources. And that's when you know you have mastery. Mastery is all about having the wisdom around it. You see, you're here because you want to get to higher levels of your career. Or maybe you're thinking to yourself, I'm not there yet because there are problems in my career path. I'm having problems in my career growth. Well, I'm here to share with you as a coach, an executive coach, that there are no such things as career problems. Career problems are nothing more than thinking problems. And that's what I mean by contemplation. Creates, it catalyzes achievement. Right? And it is Einstein's definition of a fool to constantly be doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. But the same thing can be applied to thinking. As long as we keep thinking the same way, thinking at the same level, thinking within the boundaries of what we know, then we are only able to create more of the results we have now. So contemplation opens, catalyzes, which means accelerates your achievements. So if you want to achieve something different from what you have now, which could be a promotion, which could be a different position, or maybe being able to be doing more of what you're doing now or something different from what you're doing now, then it requires a different way of thinking. Your contemplative power. Contemplative power leads to creative power. It leads to communicative power. It leads to achievement power as well, and you can be completely empowered from within, right? So that is principle number four. And now let's move on to the fifth principle. And principle number five is community circulates similarities. Your community is who do you spend time with? Who do you spend the most time with? And those individuals that you're spending time with or the most of your time with, do they have the success that you desire in your life? Are they able to challenge you in ways that are meaningful? Are they able to coach you and give you real feedback and very helpful feedback on how to improve and where to improve? Do they have all the strategies to impart upon you so that when you implement their strategies, you can have the success that you so desire, right? Because a huge part of your personal growth and your development in your career depends on who you surround yourself with. And these people, Makeup, they influence very strongly, even though you're not aware of it, they influence very strongly your attitudes, your philosophies, and your knowledge of how problems can be solved. And they expand your mind. And that's the most important part about a community. It expands your mind. Because while most people are doing one thing, just because it's popular doesn't mean it is successful. Just because it's the popular thing to do or what most people do doesn't mean it's going to be the thing that you do that leads to what you want to see happen in your life. Right? So that's why I caution you when it comes to popularity. Are you wanting to be popular or are you wanting to be successful in the way that you define it? Do you want to live a life where you are part of the popular group? Or do you want to live a life that is truly and deeply inspiring to you? So we all have a choice here. Because one thing that is very popular to do is to go out and get information. Collect as much information as we can. And the information that popularity likes to achieve are information based on tactics. Tactical stuff. Like what do I do? Exactly what do I say? Tell me the steps to it. And that's a very popular approach. But the problem with that popular approach is that you have all the tactics, but tactics does not mean it works in every time and every situation. You need a strategy. You have to understand, when do I implement this tactic? When is a good time to initiate? And why do certain tactics work over others when it comes to this context? 
knowing the when and the why is all part of having high level thinking, which goes back to principle number two, and also goes back into learning to receive mastery. Right, so I mentioned before the opportunity to work with me if you want to develop this mastery. But if you're not ready for that yet, then you can check out this video right here. And this video is a video I created recently on how you can apply what I shared with you today in job interviews. So specifically in a job interview, how do you sell yourself? How do you answer particular questions? Right, so if you're not ready for my coaching yet, check out that video that's in that link. And this is where you can go into a little deeper dive onto some steps on how you apply this specifically in job interviews.